Well, let's, uh, let's cover a little bit of the muscles of the upper limb. We are looking here at the back of the neck and our shoulder. We're looking at the trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle, it's named so because if you put the two trapezius muscles together, they will shape like a diamond. The origin of the trapezius muscle is fairly long. We will see that the trapezius muscle is taking origin from the occipital bone, from the ligamentum nuchae, from the spinous process of all the thoracic vertebrae. The insertion, it will insert itself into the lateral one-third, posterior lateral one-third of your clavicle into your scapular spine. And because of all these fibers, fibers are descending, fi other fibers are ascending, some other fibers are horizontal, uh, then the action of the trapezius muscle will always vary. So it can always, depending on which uh, fibers that are contracting, it, uh, it can either elevates or depresses or retracts your scapula. The nerve supply for your trapezius muscle is by the accessory nerve, accessory nerve, all right? So if I would take the trapezius muscle off and I'm looking now at the muscles underneath, we're gonna ignore now the muscles of the head and neck because we already covered those. But we are looking here at a muscle that inserts itself into the superior angle of your scapula. And we call that levator scapulae. It takes origin from the transverse process of uh, C1 to C4 and it inserts itself into your uh, superior angle of your scapula. It's supplied by cervical spinal nerve and also some branches from dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve, we'll hear that name later on when we get to the two other muscles here. These are the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major muscles. From the name, it's called levator scapulae, so from the name, it elevates the scapula. It can also down rotate the scapula at the same time when it's elevating it. Let's go to the rhomboid muscles then, and I bent my pointer. Um, we have two rhomboid muscles. One is rhomboid minor and the other one is rhomboid major. The rhomboid minor will be taking origin from the spinous process of C7 and the spinous process of T1. Rhomboid major will take origin from T2 to T5. Both of them insert themselves respectively into the medial border or what we call vertebral border of your scapula, right? The action of them is to stabilize and also to retract the scapula, depending again which muscles are acting simultaneously with your rhomboid major and your rhomboid minor. As we said earlier, along with um, the levator scapulae, they share your dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve. That gets us to this large muscle of your shoulder that makes the curvature of your shoulder. This is your deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle will take an origin from the lateral one-third of the anterior aspect of your clavicle and will take origin from your acromion and will take origin also from the spine of your scapula. And the insertion will all unite together to give you an insertion point and the, at the humerus in what we call deltoid tuberosity. Deltoid tuberosity. Again, this is one of those complicated muscles because it has anterior part and posterior part and middle part. So the action will depend whether these ones are the ones that are contracting, so it will cause flexion of the arm, or those ones that will cause extension of the arm, or those ones then you are having abduction of the arm. The nerve supply for this muscle is called axillary nerve, axillary nerve, right? I'm taking this off now and I'm turning my model around so I can show you the pectoral region, the pectoral region muscles. 
The very first muscle that we will see here, it's called pectoralis major muscle. Pectoralis major muscle. And it's taking an origin from the medial half of your clavicle, of the anterior aspect, and it's taking origin from the sternum. It's also taking origin from costal cartilage 1 to 6. It all gets inserted into the intertubercular sulcus. It's a powerful um, flexor and adductor of your, um, of your arm. Flexor and ab adductor of your um, arm. It helps you when you are doing push-ups, when, you um, when you are climbing, um, that, that kind of work. You will see p sport people who are doing this kind of work that they have quite um, strong pectoralis major. The nerve supply for the pectoralis major is by a nerve by a ner nerves called medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Medial and lateral pectoral nerves. Okay. If I am to take the pectoralis major out and reveal what's underneath, we will see here another pectoralis that is your pectoralis minor muscle. Pectoralis minor. The pectoralis minor will be taking the origin from ribs 3 to 5. So 3, 4, and 5 is here below. They're all inserting into the coracoid process, the coracoid process, which is this structure you see here. Uh, the nerve supply is by medial pectoral nerve, medial pectoral nerve. The action for your pectoralis minor, it depresses and also protracts your shoulder. Depresses and protracts the shoulder. All right? That covers our shoulder area. We did cover the pectoral region. We cover the levator scapulae. And we cover the rhomboid major and rhomboid minor on the back. And I'm going to now switch the models to show you the rest of the arm muscles.